welcome back to Razor Active. Uh, just before the break, we were talking about England, England, and more of England. Well, I think enough about England already. Let's take a look at the other groups uh, that we want to look at. Um, Portugal, for one, in Group 1. Something to look at. So, gentlemen. Okay, Ernest, what do you think? Portugal, after two games, they yeah. are... Okay, Portugal, yeah. crap, la. one draw, one lost. Yes, and they are fourth in the table behind Albania, yeah. which mm -hmm. is leading. Denmark is second, and then Sweden, third. So Portugal, for a team that reached the quarterfinals, it's not good enough for them. Uh, they need to pick it up. But I think Portugal's problem, as we were saying uh, during the break, is they famously lack this trademark, you know, instantly recognizable feared striker. You know, in the mall of you've got Ruud van Nistelrooy for Holland. You know, you you can even argue that you have say someone like Wayne Rooney for England. You know. Okay, not Emil Hersky or what, but still, you know, each team, even Spain, they have Fernando Torres or uh, every team, I think all the teams, they have a trademark. I think Portugal has lacked this for the longest time. Before Nuno Gomes, it was Pauleta. Yeah. Still not good enough. Well, come on, I mean, yeah. I, I have to say this, I mean, like, in a group that consists of no notable strong team, no matter who they have in their starting eleven. Yeah. Portugal are the Brazil of Europe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they should whitewash, I mean... Taking a glance at the group again, yeah. the only opposition I can see is Sweden. Yes. There. And um, oh, perhaps Hungary uh, mm. you know, and as, as a wild card, but, but uh, I, don't, I don't understand how they can find themselves in fourth yeah. place after two games, even with all the. I mean, fair enough, Ronaldo hasn't been playing, but so what? You know, in terms of quality, apart from the Spanish, perhaps the, the Portuguese are there, the style team, the, the technical mm. team, the, the. Stylish team, but no end product. You look right, they can string right a thousand passes in 90 minutes, mm. but when it gets to the... I agree, I agree, and product matters when yeah. you have quality teams, la. like you know, Italians mm. or Germans or your French or whatever, but look, again, look at the group. Yeah, they should, but they should be, I, I don't know whether they can solve this problem. Mm. If they haven't been able to solve it for four years since Euro 2004, mm -hmm. it's always going to hamper their eventual progress. If they can't make it, I mean, at... In a major tournament, yes, you suspect maybe they can get to the semi-finals, which they did at World Cup, did, yeah. even then. But still, uh, I don't know, I still feel that Portugal just needs that one world-class striker, and then that sort of will is, complete it. Is them. Carlos, Carlos Queiroz the yeah. man for Portugal? He should be, I think. I mean, he's a good candidate to take over from Scolari. Uh, good tactical knowledge, you know. A very different personality. Scolari is very... Yeah, he's like the grandpa, right? Yeah, uh, he's very like yeah. that. Scolari is like this grandpa of the team, you know, hey, come on guys, you know, I sign you yeah. and all that, you know, then he scolds some of the media and even some of the As opposing opposed to coaches. Scolari who gets a physical yeah. with the opposition players. But Kiros, well. I think, you know, he, he studies a lot, you know, he's tactically, uh, I mean, he's been credited by Ferguson for helping a lot of the... So is that, is that what the Portuguese need? Do they need a firebrand manager or a more like, you know, scholarly type of... I mean, they have the scholarly type, and I don't see a problem with them understanding the tactical needs and all that. But I think, like you said, uh, you still need that firebrand mm. striker there. You know, they, they just need one guy like that. I don't know whether Nuno Gomez is going to be the guy in will, the long run. Will Ronaldo make a difference? He's been injured. He's, he missed the, f the last two, the first two games. Mm. Um, is Ronaldo going to be a big impact for the Portuguese team? He's, you know what I tell you? What when he, when he first came back, right? Even with after the injury stint, I was surprised, man, at the level of play. You know, he just needs some time and then he will get back up there. The interesting thing is how they might want to consider if they don't have any trademark striker, how they want to use him a bit more up front, which they've tried, but it doesn't seem to come out. Uh, I'm not sure that might take some time. So they need a bit more experimentation there. Okay, I'm going to deviate a little bit. Yeah. Okay, like... Thierry Henry, right, when he first started off with Arsenal, he wasn't a natural striker. Mm. He started off on the left. Yeah. Ronaldo, obviously, is not a natural striker. But do you think he can be developed into an Henry type of striker? Where, you know, you start, so, you start him off on the wing first. Yeah. Pick up the dribbling skills, the vision and everything. Then, maybe a year or two from now, move into a, you know, to become your typical point man. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, don't. Yeah. It, worked, it worked for Henri. Yeah, I and, and I, I credit that to to Arsene Wenger's brilliance. Yeah. Only maybe Arsene Wenger can 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 uncover, can can do something like that. Yeah, I think it, it depends on the system of play. Mm. Then this is where the coach comes in, right? If you want a target man, then it's quite straightforward. The guy stays there, you know. He knocks it down like Emil Heskey would. 
But if you want someone like Thierry Henry, then you've got to have a midfielder who's a Zidane type, which they have in Deco. Deco. Yeah. Uh, this midfielder must be able to do the through passes. Because Thierry Henry can run fast and uh, it's finishing. Ronaldo can run fast. Now, if you're going to put him up there, you've got to ask Ronaldo to operate maybe just in front of the back four. And then you've got a guy further behind who can play the through pass like Fabregas mm. does. You know, and then that allows Ronaldo to use his speed. Yeah, but, but Henri never had Fabregas. He had Vieira. They had what causes like. Oh yeah, but they still Gilberto had and the and passing. You know, they, they did. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. and like Perez and all that. So, I think you need to use make use of the qualities. But again, it, that depends on the system. Then that's where the coach comes in and he has to tweak that system. So it'll be interesting to see how they fine tune that experiment because. Otherwise, they're always going to have a problem. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is, don't be surprised to see on uh, you know Ronaldo in a couple of years, you know, change his traditional role from a winger to a main striker. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's Portugal. Let's take a look at Germany in Group Four. What should we be looking out for? Germany, Russia is live uh, mm. this weekend as well. Yep. Um, of course, Germany and Russia. Everyone uh, knows Russia much much better because of what they did in. Euro 2008. Uh, I think Joachim Lowe from Germany, the coach, he was saying that uh, Russia's counter-attacking speed is the key thing to watch out for. And uh, they're going to be missing Roman Pavlyuchenko, who hasn't been performing for a team that I shall not mention in the Premier League. <laughs> Spurs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they've got some replacements, but I don't think it's going to be the, uh, the same. You know, so they might depend on the midfield. Is uh, Russia overly reliant on Kusidink? Uh How so? I mean, put them on the map, right? I mean, yeah. b- before Russia, they were the, the, the USSR, but as a combined mm. team, they did well. But yeah. as a Russian team on their own, you know, they, they made no impact until mm. recently in the Euro, in the, in the previous Euro Championship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Gu Sidink, he has a reputation. I know he, look at what he did for South Koreans, for the Australians, and now for the Russians. Mm. Um, so, is it? Are they are they gonna be? Are they like a, um, a candle in the wind kind of thing? Like are they gonna flicker now and then after goose, you know, cooks mm. his goose and then he leaves Russia? You know, yeah. What's gonna happen to them and stuff? I don't know. I, I, if I, if you look at the team, right, individually, right, they all have quality. You know, actually, I was surprised mm. during Euro two thousand. I mean, my best, one of the best players I thought in that tournament was Chukov which is the left back. Uh, you must be yeah. careful about how you yeah. pronounce that name. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Chirkov was good and they've got... It was a very... Again, this is, I think, this is what England needs, right? You know, because he has the personality. He's got a style of system of play that he wants. It's not very fancy. Mm. It's like a basic 4-4-2. Mm. Then you've got Ashavin just right. buzzing, around buzzing around with uh, tar- the target man, you know, yeah. Pavlyuchenko is... Simple. It's easy to understand. Everyone knew what they were going to do, and I think what Goose Hiding has, along with Scolari, is is they have this personality. You know, it's a magnetic personality. The media loves them. Uh, managers or the the officials love them because they they have this endearing quality. They also know their stuff. Uh, so I think for a team that's coming up in the international scene, you need these personalities to lift you up first build up the confidence which I think they have mm. from Euro 2008. Now it's uh, time to get the best out of them. Are they too reliable? Yeah. I mean, if, Sh- if Ashavin doesn't perform, if I Could mean, be, yeah. Chanko doesn't, yeah. it's not going to yeah. even play at all. Yeah, if they have the off days, that's it. I think they're going to break down. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. I think they just need to find that consistency which is what the right, best right. teams have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's take a look at Spain in Group 5. Okay, Spain. Spain to me is the quintessential team that finally lived up to this lived up to his hype yeah. in the last Euro. I mean, yeah. everybody, I mean, their <laughs> quality is through and through and finally they delivered. Mm. You know, yes. And they delivered in style as well. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they had a good defence. They had good great midfield. Field, they great had attack. great attack. They finally, everything clicked. Uh, it was a system, it was a bit more sophisticated than say, maybe at the traditional 4 4 2 It was a 4 one, three, two, which they still play and they found that. And the thing is, now they have that consistency. So they're going to start with that formation again, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, and Torres, obviously. Can Sorry, I mean, just, just to bring it back to England again. Yeah. Can the same thing that happened to Spain happen to England? I mean, it just clicked for them. I mean, 
In terms of quality and place, you, you, yeah. some people can argue that you have the same quality in England, you have the mm. same quality in Spain. But in, in Spain, everything just came together in the last championship. Do you think that's all it takes? Just one small spark, and for you, know, England will actually live up to its hype. Yeah, because uh, you just need a bit of continuity, I think. Yeah. Uh, Spain, if you notice, they weren't changing around. Even all the calls for Fabregas to be included, that's typical English but uh, mentality. End, but but know? towards the end of the championship, Fabregas was... Yeah, he came in, right? Team, yeah. yeah, but I think the, the core of the, the team was still basically unchanged. And they tried to keep that rhythm going. Keep that rhythm. At the first few... The first few times I was also myself a bit hesitant, but you know I could see that he was trying, uh, Aragonés was trying to mm. instill that rhythm. So you never know. With England, I think the key lies in this Lampard Gerard thing. You know, if they don't try and sign each other too <laughs> much, like some you know odd couple or whatever, and they just take uh, the game by in their own hands, you know. My problem is even if yeah. the two of them play and they beat, like I said, Kazakhstan ten yeah. so what? Yeah. Doesn't mean a thing. Yeah. This match is, uh, this match doesn't mean mean anything. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, some of the other key matches, uh, some of the matches you can keep your eyes on this Sunday. Okay, let's see what's there. Ukraine, Croatia. That will be uh, key to the uh, fortunes of England in Group Six. Mm-hmm. Germany, Russia. We can watch that here in Singapore. That will be good. Good attacking teams, both. Uh. Historically, so there's a lot yeah. of baggage, la, So it'll be interesting to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Romania, France, of course, we want to see whether Raymond Dominic gets sacked <laughs> yep. after this game. And Romania, although they haven't been informed lately, uh, they're still team, dangerous. Team. Yeah. Yeah. Bulgaria is a good team as well. Yep. Don't write them off. Italy, uh, same thing for ca- the same thing can be said for the Italian manager yeah. as for the French manager as well. Lippi yeah. uh, back in, oh, yeah. Yeah, back right, in right. charge. That's why Dono Doni is out. Yeah. yeah, but the problem with Italy, they have, have a couple of injuries. So Giladino is going to be up front instead of Luca Toni. Italy has a striking problem as well, right? They can't rely on Del Piero. Mm. Yeah, it's so a relic. They it's another relic. In, yeah. They're going to start with Giladino mm. instead of... Then Estonia and Spain, we've already talked about it. Sweden versus Portugal, we've uh, talked about it. But I think exciting match, Germany and Russia. Then, of mm. course, the match that will turn the world over is <laughs> England versus Kazakhstan. Of course, also, it's all about England. Well, uh, that's all the time we have for you this evening on Razor Active. Uh, well, you know what to look up for this weekend, but don't go away because Razor Top 5 is up next.